Hey there, Internet! My name's Alexander, and today I wanted to just talk about some more discoursey stuff going on again. Mainly what I want to talk about in this video is that new stuff has happened surrounding ContraPoints, and I just want to kind of talk about it real quick. Uh, the most recent updates since I last talked about Natalie Wynn, so I have a video up here I can link you to that's describing a situation that Natalie got into on Twitter regarding miscommunications but about pronouns, basically like, I want people to do this and other people want people to do this and there's a conflict of interest here. That was a whole thing. I talked about it already. Essentially, I am like, usually, I understand where Natalie is coming from about things. I understand why the things that she has said are like, a little bit affrontery. It's like, what, what? How, you said what now? Like, I get it but also I see where she was coming from, so I already explained that before, and like, there's other videos that she's made that people have been like, that's non-binary phobic, and I haven't ever perceived that from her. And now, the most recent situation that we have is that Natalie uh, posted another video called Opulence, and she had several people do voiceover work in that video, and one of the people that did voiceover work was Buck Angel, who is a trans male porn star, and he's old, and tends to be against non-binary people, and is one of those people who believes that you have to have medical stuff done in order to, to be trans, and so trans medicalist, or true scum, are words to describe that, and it, it just, it strikes me as a little bit, um, really fucking bad optics. People have criticized Natalie before for saying things that people perceive as being, you could construe that as being anti-non-binary, okay? And then, I, a non-binary person, I'm like, I don't see how that's NB-phobic, and then you collaborate with fucking Buck Angel, so I'm kind of frustrated, I will say, I'm a little bit frustrated about it, because it definitely makes me feel like I have just shown my ass, like, like I've made a mistake in trusting Natalie, and in trying to understand her perspective, it, it a little bit feels like I have been duped. But Natalie also posted on her Patreon, um, behind the paywall, this is strange also, like someone went in and screenshotted this and that's how I saw it on Twitter. Uh, Natalie posted a post saying that she was going to explain why she had Buck Angel in her video in her next video. So, Natalie posts about once a month. I get that. She puts, like, a several weeks of work into each video. However, <laughs> that statement wasn't public. That was a patron-only statement. That was a behind-a-paywall statement, from what I understand, at least, having seen the screenshot. And it's gonna be a month until the next video is out, because Opulence just came out. So, it just seems like a really long time to just not explain what that is about, and it, it really is like, what are you doing, Natalie? And like, I have tried to reason with people about this, and now I feel like I am the jerk. It's a little bit annoying. I would like to think that there's a good explanation for it, but in the meantime, I'm just going to spend a month wondering if this person who I generally admire their opinions and their way of delivering those opinions, and who I have generally considered to be an ally, everything that I have seen from Natalie indicates to me that she has her own mental issues working through gender theory, and trying to justify people's existence when others don't want to acknowledge our existence. A lot of her arguments I've really agreed with, and I will stand by the statements I made about her trans trender video. I think that that was extremely well articulated, and I don't know how you would be able to do that if you weren't in support of non-binary people. But it's just really bad optics to work with trans medicalist Buck Angel, who ha who also, from what I've heard, also outed a trans woman in a magazine before she was out. Like, one of the Wachowski sisters, apparently Buck Angel outed her in a magazine article before either of the Wachowski sisters had come out as trans women. So, these are just layers on layers of bad, and also, it has come to my attention that on the ContraPoints subreddit, I believe it was, they've blacklisted the word true scum. Like, if you say the word true scum in your in your comment on the Reddit page, it will be 
removed until you take that uh, until you take that word out like they're treating it as though it's like a derogatory slur kind of thing and like it is derogatory but like it's basically similar to me as like TERFs saying, like, don't call us TERFs. Like, yes, it's derogatory. Um, I kind of understand the position that the- using the term scum is dehumanizing. I can kind of see that. However, it is also my understanding that true scum and trans medicalist are not synonymous terms. I've had people try to explain to me on Twitter after dealing with some annoying harassment that I had to deal with that true scum and trans med are two different things. Like, I think the way that it was explained to me is that a trans med is someone who believes that you have to have certain surgeries and hormones in order to be validly trans, and true scum don't think that non-binary people are trans. I don't exactly know. However, I, I am aware that within that grouping of people, they make a distinction between the two terms, and they mean two different things although they tend to be used synonymously because a lot of these beliefs sort of feed back into each other. But, so I just think that's interesting that we're homogenizing this group that purports itself to have nuances between these terms. We're calling them all trans medicalists. And I realize that Natalie is not in charge of the moderation of the subreddit. It's just bad timing on the optics of all of this, it really looks like, oh, we in Natalie's community are sympathetic to true scum because we don't want you to call them true scum. Again, I will say, again, that I understand to a degree that using term like scum is dehumanizing. It just is, it, oh, it's, it's a, it's a thin reason, it seems for the th stuff that's going on right now. So basically all of this has left me in a position where I f I'm concerned. I, you know, I want to have, like, faith that this person who seems to be able to well articulate arguments in support of me, like, isn't secretly against me, you know? It, it's, it would be nice to think that. And, like, I don't, I don't pin anything on ContraPoint's channel. I don't pin my acceptance on her ability to communicate or anything like that. I look up to her because she's good at her job, not because as a person, like, she's my hero or something. I learned my lesson with Chase Ross, so. But the point is, it's still disappointing to me, and I still, like, uh, this is something I have commented publicly on because I think that I can offer clarity. And then, like, hmm, it just, uh, it starts to feel like, oh, the one person in the world who would understand dog whistles is Natalie. The one person who would understand walking a fine line between being a bigot and, you know, being, like, somewhat acceptable to a community, Natalie would be the one who understands it. And I just feel a little bit like it would be really un unfortunate if, you know, this was a situation where there were things I could have seen and, like, she was just towing the line on, on just this side of being acceptable on this side is unacceptable. I don't know. I just am very frustrated <laughs> with the situation. It sort of feels like no matter where you are on the internet right now, like, there's always some kind of drama of some sort. Like, wow, what a, what a, what a idea to find a community where there isn't constantly shit like this going on. I, I got back into the atheist community earlier this year and then decided that that was a terrible idea and it just got worse. That's like a whole bunch of drama and I commented on that and I have more thoughts on that, but it's just so much easier to just disconnect. And then I went back to my leftist communities. It's very frustrating when I think people have legitimate concerns. I have legitimate concerns. And then there's like a large group of people who are actually being like pretty shitty about things. Like, I do think that there are non-binary people who argue, and I'm, I'm talking about multiple situations right now. Don't think I'm talking about any one specific situation. There are situations where non-binary people and their allies, when arguing about things that have to do with them, don't take into account that there is a person on the other side of things. I have seen it happen, and I think it's very unfortunate that, it, it, like, the internet allows you to be vicious towards people in a way that you wouldn't be if you had to see the way that they react to their face, if you had to deal with their reaction to their face. And I don't think that that's very productive. I understand being angry, and I understand being frustrated, but I have seen people make some genuinely shitty, shitty comments, and like, 
I've heard about people being doxxed, you know, this is not necessary, um, and and it's unfortunate that people who do have reasoned outlooks and, and who have those same concerns but won't be heard because the people who are upset, justifiably so, are acting out and then it just causes people to shut down entirely, and then you have a situation where everyone who is friends with Natalie is publicly stating, like, we still love you and support you, and like, I understand you love your friend and support your friend. Consider also how that makes your non-binary audience feel. If there are legitimate concerns, and you're just, oh, you're all a fucking mob, and we don't want to listen to any of you, because there are outspoken people with the same opinions as me, just not communicating in a way that is that causes people to be receptive. Like, you do have to try to communicate in a way that is that people are going to be receptive to, and they're not always going to listen to you, and I don't think that that justifies amping up the level of vitriol. And I don't think that just because someone is in a public light means that you can communicate to them with a bunch of vitriol, as though they are not a person who goes through their own Twitter mentions. Like, people end up having to hire someone to go through their own social media because they get so much hate and harassment. And again, I'm not saying that the criticism is illegitimate at all, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't be angry. I am saying that you shouldn't expect people to listen to you if you are going to be shitty about who they are as a person, or if you're going to personally attack them. And there could be an argument to be made that, you know, the people who are receiving these criticisms need to be more discriminating, and that's, that, that is part of what I'm frustrated about, that the amount of shitty comments that they get just kind of, all of it blends together, and legitimate criticism they just aren't able to process it because they are emotionally prepared for the onslaught. They are emotionally dealing with a lot of aggression, and so that does not put someone in a frame of mind where the legitimate criticism that it is in a way that's not attacking them is not going to come through nearly as clearly. So it's like an issue where people are getting triggered into shutting down, and people are getting triggered into being super upset about things, because they're essentially, they feel like people within their own community are turning their backs on them and throwing them under the bus for their own success. I understand the the difficulty and the emotional response that goes into that. Someone who you have trusted, you know, taking advantage of the fact that, you know, you're a small part of their demographic and they don't have to pay attention to you and they can even actively shit on you. That is a, a difficult thing to deal with, and I'm not saying necessarily that that's what's happening, but I do think that that is where people feel like things are happening. That is how people feel it's going on. And again, I am myself now dealing with this I, this thought of like, well shit, have I, have I been tricked by this person into supporting them and in continuing to watch their content and stuff like that, you know? As with many things, I, I find myself disappointed with people on multiple fronts. I am disappointed that people are so vitriolic about things. I'm disappointed that legitimate criticism is not being heard and it's just being treated like it's part of the rest of this mob. You know, I, I am disappointed that, that Natalie would have Buck Angel come and do voiceover work for her. I, I, I'm looking forward to the explanation. I hope it's a good one. I guess in short, I kind of just wish that people would stop doing shitty things. Stop working with fucking true scum. Stop yelling at people on the internet, like, as though they're not a person with feelings. Like, don't dox people. Don't tell people to kill themselves. Like, just calm down, everybody. Jesus. And like, also, me saying calm down, I want everybody to understand that I get that these things are upsetting, right? And that, yes, working with Buck Angel is shitty. Yes. In America, transgender people are on the brink of losing several rights, like the right to work and the right to be covered under civil rights law. Okay? That's all I mean. Perspective. Why are you so pissed off about a YouTube personality, you know, when, when the real world is much more actually dangerous, you know? Is it because we emotionally can only handle the YouTube personality? Because thinking about the fact that we're about to lose our rights is a little bit scary? I get that, yes, but that doesn't mean that you should take, like, the amount of 
emotion that you should be having about the Supreme Court cases and taking all of that energy and throwing it at leftist YouTube. It's like, wh how, how is this productive and a good use of your time? That's all. That's all I mean. But hey, people are probably still mad at me, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop talking here. If you like this video, please give me pretty analytics to look at and comments to read. Find me on Patreon, tip me on PayPal, subscribe to this channel, ring the bell for notifications, and I really hope you have an okay day. Bye. Shout out to the lovely patrons once again. We have The Gay Agenda, Amber Music, Gretchen Becker, Wellington Marcus, Elizabeth Bartell, Pinesnake, Jess Zendrix, and Mr. Atheist. You're all lovely.